So, you were asked to jump when we came uh, early on, and, and this is a seismometer, and this is what actually detected that ground vibration. So when you jumped, the ground was shaking. This instrument here was detecting those, uh, that ground vibration, and we're just plotting it on the screen, okay? Now, this can also detect very small earthquakes. So anything bigger than, a, say, a magnitude 6 earthquake anywhere in the world, magnitude 6 here, which is completely saturated, magnitude 6 earthquake anywhere in the world, if it went off now, say, South America, the waves would come here, we would be able to detect it on this instrument. It's a very sensitive instrument. Normally, they're buried in the ground, just a small, a small depth, and they can record things that are going on underground. And the things they're recording, they're not sound as we know it in the air, but it's waves, sound waves propagating in the earth, and they're normally very low frequency. You see the, the longest pipe that Alex has, they're below that. So it would be a pipe that if Alex struck it, it would be so low that you couldn't hear it. It would be low the, below the human hearing range, okay? So, I can actually generate what we might call nice sine wave here. So you can actually see if underground we had something nice and, and simple going on, like just a single pipe pushed here, we could actually see this nice sine wave. But if we have something a bit more complex, with a few different things going on at the same time, but not at the same frequency, you can see, you can see that the, the thing starts to look a bit messier, and we record that here, and this is our job in terms of uh, seismologists, which is the thing we do. We've actually to take this signal, and we have to figure out from that signal what sort of stuff is going on underground. So here you can see we've had three people just doing things that are almost like nice and, nice and calm sine waves, but we have to kind of what's called invert that signal and turn it into information about what's going on underground. It's like, from the orchestra point of view, it's like sitting here with your eyes closed, not having seen anything that he set up here, and he's playing away a very complicated instrument, and he's well able to make complicated instruments, yeah. as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go, okay, what is he playing? What, what exactly, what sort of pipes has he got? What has he got there? And you have to figure that orchestra out just by taking the data and analyzing it, okay? So that's, that's the challenge that we have. So, very uh, briefly, I'll show you now in the field. Um, I just have to kill this guy here. So, this is an example of myself a couple of years back, I have to say, but with a, with a colleague on Mount Etna. And I put this up just to counteract Magella. I got a sneak preview of Magella's uh, presentation yesterday, and she had the scientists in the coats, you know, looking all very... Um, kind of stayed, and I thought, no, it actually isn't like that. So this is us having genuinely having some fun before we went in the field um, to deploy these instruments. It's lashing rain, it's freezing cold. I know it's Mount Etna in Sicily. You think, but Sicily is warm, but it's, we're at two and a half thousand meters high here. So as you go up in altitude, obviously the temperature is dropping, and so there's an eruption going on behind us. And actually, interesting, you can feel the heat of that on the back of your head. So it was only cold at the front and warm at the back. So um, yeah, so. It's not always uh, lab coats and, 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 uh, and, be, and grim. Um, sometimes it can be, it can be uh, nice, uh, nice and rewarding and nice and fun. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, a recording of some stuff that we actually got on uh, Piton de la Fornez volcano in, on La Reunion, La Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean, okay? And the graph at the very top shows the depth where the signal is coming from. So you can see zero means sea level because the volcano is two kilometers high. So you can see with time that it's changing in depth. So it's getting shallower. Don't mind the other two. They're just the kind of X, Y position of the, of the sound. We actually had multiple of these things. We're able to locate where this stuff's coming from. Okay. And uh, I will just play that. So you've, we basically we have speeded this up so that one minute of, of data, that I, one minute in our lives here, is actually one hour's worth of, of data actually recorded in the field. It's quiet at the beginning. Starting. So the instrument's picking up the ground vibrations that have been made 
In this case, the ground vibrations are two kilometers underground. Okay? And some little stuff starting to happen. The volcano is about to erupt. And this is the this is the pre-signal that we're getting before it erupts, a couple of hours before it erupts. It starts off with these little wispy things. That's a piece of rock breaking in the underground, two kilometers underground. Later on, we discovered that by locating it. And so what you've got is you've got magma. It's trying to push its way up. And it's a stiff rock. And it's trying to push and bang. It's, it just breaks the rock and snaps it. You can hear it cracking. Literally hundreds and maybe even thousands of fractures now are breaking and, and fracturing in the subsurface. So we're now somewhere here, somewhere here in the, in the sequence. Now, if you're recording this, this is still two kilometers underground. So this stuff is, is bashing its way in, breaking the rock traveling underground, and now things go quiet. This has always been a bit of a mystery. What, what, what's going on? Things go quiet. But we, know that we actually know now that the eruption came out about an hour later. And what we discover through analyzing these data, if you look at the top, is that in this quiet period, the magma has now started to come to the surface, but that the rocks nearer the surface are not as stiff. You know, they're like, more like kind of uh, putty or like toffee, a little bit, not quite. They're more toffee-like. And so instead of them breaking, they kind of ooze out of the way. And so they're not kind of making these crackly sounds. Um, and then eventually, we'll hear some different sound. You hear this different sound, like an airplane going over? That is the lava has now come out through a big fracture in the ground. And it's now flowing across the ground. And it's creating a different, it's like having multiple, multiple of these guys, you know, to create a different sound much broader sound than the individual pieces. So you can hear it's it is like a piece of it's like a piece of music in its own way. It's uh, it has it has a type of beauty to it as well. Uh, it has a it's not predictable, uh, but it it also has a it has its own it has its own beauty to it. So I'm just going to finish up with this uh, uh, last slide. So this is connecting back to the sort of stuff that that Alex talked about with a slinky as well. How you get these modes uh, these modes going uh, if the subsurface was nice and behaved, you know. So if it was just, uh, if it was just uh, like one of these, like one of these pipes, then he showed how you get this resonance. It would sound something. It would sound something like this. So if you struck it, it look. If something goes ping underground, you get something. You get something nice like this. So if we were to then just change, listen to that sound and see how it's changing in time you know, we would just basically hear this, it would just be going. But in actual fact, when we plot it up, we see something that looks a lot more complex. The details don't really matter, but this is related to the frequencies that the three of us did before. We vibrate, you know, this kind of uh, jogging thing at different frequencies, and that's these different lines here. This is time going along this axis, and this is the frequency along this axis. So you see these different frequencies, like say Magellan was probably going the fastest, or Alex was going the fastest, whatever. You can see these different frequencies. When we pull these out at and how it's changing in time, instead of it just doing this, it does something a lot more complicated. 
And the, the issue we have, of course, is that we're trying to turn this uh, into an understanding of what's going on in the subsurface. And that's what rocks breaking two kilometers underground sound like. But sped up many times. But sped up many times. Thank you. OK, so if you're to take one thing from today, it's to realize our different points of entry into understanding the world. Music and science, try not to pitch them against each other. They're different. They're not better or worse, they're just different. And if every image embodies a way of seeing, take a closer look at it, especially if it's not exactly what we see. If we're never looking at just one thing, we're always looking at it in relation to ourselves. What is it really revealing? And this doesn't have to be about music or science. It can be about anything. It can be about culture. It could be about neurodiversity. It could be about language. I, I also play music, um, just in case that wasn't clear, it's just I don't make my living from it. So it's not this idea that everybody who, who becomes a musician actually becomes a performer. Um, ideally, we would get to the point where science and music, so science is still there, it's just that they're at the same place, that they're all considered at the same level. That there's an element of creativity in science, also sound, that Chris is connected to it emotionally. Imagination, <laughs> fun, instruments, entertainment, interpretation, research, discovery, that all of these things overlap. So you don't, there's not that big divide that we seem to think there is uh, in music and science. So if every image embodies a way of seeing, just think a little bit about what it is exactly you see. Thank you very much. <laughs>